All warfare is based on deception. What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight we're going to be talking about the new rumor about MW3 Campaign Remastered, a huge update about PlayStation exclusivity, and even some new footage for the upcoming release of Modern Warfare 2. Definitely stay tuned, but before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and make sure you have notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold War Year 2, Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, and any other future Call of Duty as well. Now it's been a fairly busy week, I posted hell of a lot, in case you guys missed it, I do have the video links down below in this video's description. First off, I talked about a topic that I haven't addressed in quite some time, Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Multiplayer. It's actually real. Well, sort of. I go in more detail about that in the Legacy Map Pack thumbnail, as you guys will see over on my channel. And this morning, I also talked about Xbox Game Pass. Now, Call of Duty might actually go somewhat close to free-to-play once the Microsoft acquisition does close in the next couple of months. Lots of crazy and massive changes for the entire COD franchise that warranted individual videos this past week. But there's also a new rumor that surfaced, which I also felt warranted its own own video, and that is regarding another topic I haven't talked about in a while, MW3 Campaign Remastered. Yes, something that we never thought we'd talk about again, considering a good year and a half ago, it was confirmed by Activision through the press, that is, that MW3 Campaign Remastered actually doesn't exist. Well, Gaming Scooper the Ghost of Hope had this to say about that. When I asked the source whether or not MW3 Campaign Remastered might ever see a light of day, they had the following to say. MW3 Campaign Remastered isn't cancelled like previously reported, it is complete and is just sitting there waiting for the right time time to be released. Now, as I always say with rumors, especially from the Ghost of Hope, take it all with a grain of salt. I mean, Hope has been pretty spot on with quite a bit of Call of Duty information in the past, but has also been wrong a number of times as well. So take that as you may, but MW3 Remastered, now specifically Campaign Remastered, right? It's definitely not going to feature the multiplayer or spec ops. I think, in all honesty, there was a point in time when MW19 was probably going to be a Modern Warfare 4. Therefore, it made more sense to remaster the original MW trilogy to kind of bring people up to speed with the story of modern warfare and just getting us back to that modern warfare world but since mw19 is a reboot and the older mw games are not canon at all i think at that point they figured you know what it's kind of redundant to release the original mw campaigns remastered but i do think there was an existing contract between sony and activision to remaster the original mw trilogy and then drop each of those games 30 days early on playstation then after 30 days xbox and pc would also get those releases and they did mw1 remastered multiplayer back in 2016 because at that point it was a different time for COD. I mean, in 2016 there were three active games going at once with a lot of DLC. Black Ops 3 for Year 2, Infinite Warfare, and then Modern Warfare 1 Remastered. That was, of course, before Warzone existed, before these tight integrations came out, and, of course, before the MW reboot in 2019. Now, I also believe the MW2 Campaign Remastered was going to come out sooner than it actually did, and maybe because of the conflicts around the world, they figured, hey, maybe it's not actually appropriate to release a remastered campaign featuring a mission like No Russian, so they ended up pushing back that release until, what was it, I think March 2020, right after Warzone came out. And the game didn't have any multiplayer, of course, and I think it's obvious. At that point, MW was in full swing, Warzone had just come out, they don't want to split the player base in any way, shape, or form, so that game remained campaign only. But I think at this point in time, right, if MW3 Campaign Remastered comes out, let's say, in the next couple of months, wouldn't it be graphically outdated at this point? I mean, MW2 Campaign Remastered was still visually stunning, but at the time in 2020, it still was a tad outdated compared to the technology we have today with our newer Call of Duties like Cold War, MW. So I think if it does come out, it still won't look as crisp as the upcoming launch of Modern Warfare 2, of course, but still will be a massive improvement over the original from 2011. Now, this definitely would complete the collection. I mean, if you go to the museum in Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered, you'll notice that there are references in the museum to a remastered Modern Warfare collection, which which we all assumed was referencing all three campaigns remastered. So we all had a feeling that we would eventually see a Modern Warfare 3 campaign remaster that likely also wouldn't feature a multiplayer for the same reason that MW2 Remastered also doesn't have it. But here's the thing, right? When it comes to exclusivity through PlayStation, you know, we already have the early access beta for Modern Warfare 2 that you could play a week early on PlayStation, sure. But instead of seeing another mode like survival locked behind PlayStation exclusivity, I would much rather see this fall or maybe next year's PlayStation offer just 
be MW3 Campaign Remastered 30 days early on a PlayStation instead of that deal affecting MW2 at all. And again, this could be apples and oranges here. Maybe the deal regarding the original MW Remasters has nothing to do with whatever exclusivity is in mind for the upcoming Modern Warfare 2. But I'm just thinking if we had to really choose what would be locked by an exclusivity, I would take a remaster campaign any day of the week. Now, I do think Activision is very interested in doing more remasters in the future, MW3 included. They know exactly how much money those can make, even if they're just limited to the campaign only. A lot of people would come back to just play that campaign one more time with some current gen hardware. And I think aside from MW3, we're long overdue for some Treyarch remasters as well. Let's definitely get World at War, Black Ops 1, and especially Black Ops 2 remastered on current gen. Even if those games aren't built with the new technology, the new Modern Warfare engine, at least give those games some graphical improvement similar to what we got for MW1 and 2 campaign remaster. Now, if there's ever a time to do a remastered multiplayer, I would say it's 2023, considering there won't be a new premium COD added, but I think with MW2's focus, they want to make sure that the current player base isn't split, and we really do have a strong player count for COD 2.0, which is MW2, Warzone 2, and then Warzone Mobile. Now, there's also the possibility, as I talked about in this afternoon's podcast, that once Microsoft fully takes over and Call of Duty moves to Game Pass, maybe that will be when you will see Modern Warfare 3 Campaign Remastered finally available to play. And if you're like, wait, how does that make sense if there's Sony exclusivity? Well, here's the thing. There'll be an offer where you can play MW3 Campaign Remastered 30 days early on PlayStation, but you got to fork over, what, 20 or 30 bucks? But if you wait those 30 days out, then it'll be available on Game Pass after those 30 days are up, and you only have to, you know, download Xbox Game Pass or, or hook up a subscription if you don't have one already, which can cost about 10 to 15 bucks, depending on which package you get. So Microsoft might look at that and be like, well, it actually could even out, right? Sony has a deal with Activision, but now that Microsoft owns Activision, Sony has a deal with Microsoft, and then you can leave that where it's at, but then after 30 days it'll be on Game Pass, which would obviously make people inclined to maybe get a Game Pass subscription just to play that remaster. Now, speaking of Xbox Game Pass and just Microsoft altogether, we got some breaking news earlier this evening from Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer, who told Sony back in January that Microsoft would keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for several years after the Sony and Call of Duty deal ended. Spencer says they signed an agreement on COD having the same features on all platforms. This is via Verge. So they reported on that earlier today. And what I'll say about that is this. I mean, as I said, in my Game Pass video this morning, I predicted this. I mean, there's no reason for Microsoft to cut off Sony when PlayStation is the dominant platform for Call of Duty. Microsoft's gonna make all that money anyway, so what's the point? But if they plan on continuing the Sony and Activision deal for many years after Black Ops 2024, then I can still see this happening, right? All right, you want all these exclusives, you want all these incentives to play COD on PlayStation. All right, Sony can have that, but as a counter to it, and again, Microsoft's making all the money anyway, as a counter to it, we'll just have that new Call of Duty available day one on Game Pass. People out there might have to choose, right? Do you want to play the beta early on PlayStation and get these other bonuses and this DLC, or would you want to just pay a significantly cheaper price to play the game day one on Game Pass, and if you don't like it, you can just cancel your subscription. So it'll be a moment where the element of choice is real, right? That freedom to choose what platform you want to play on will be greater than ever. It'll just be something where there are incentives for playing on one platform or another, like it usually is with Call of Duty anyway. But it would be a bit ironic once Microsoft fully takes over that they end up extending a deal between PlayStation and Activision to the point where it's like, all right, yeah, Microsoft owns COD, but there's a bunch of deals still going on for playing Call of Duty on a PlayStation. It'll be funny to see, but I think if that deal does go on for many, many years after the next Black Ops, that just shows you the Microsoft staying true to their word, which is they want to make sure that Call of Duty is always accessible to all platforms at the same time. Now, to play devil's advocate, though, it does say it will remain on PlayStation for several years after the deal ends. So they'll extend the contract for, let's say, three or four more years. But what about after that? So we're talking closer to 2030. Will there ever be a point where Microsoft fully says, yeah, COD's no longer on PlayStation? It could happen. I don't think it's likely, at least not anytime soon, but it could happen. And I think that'll only happen if they do realize, hey, more people are actually playing COD through Game Pass now. Now we could afford that loss. Now we could afford to really cut off PlayStation. I still don't really see that being likely for the foreseeable future, but it is possible. Keep that in mind. Now today we also got a new TV spot, or that's what I'm calling it, for the Early Access Modern Warfare 2 campaign. And the TV spot is titled Backstab, with a couple of extra frames of footage from a campaign mission that we've seen a little bit of through some other promotional marketing we got over the last couple of weeks. 
and we could see what looks like riot shields being used. The same riot shields from MW 2019. I mean, who didn't expect the riot shields to come back in the upcoming Call of Duty? There's very few CODs where they're not included, so be aware. We might start seeing some more riot shields, claim more 725s, right back into the action with MW2 multiplayer. Hopefully Dead Silence is a perk, though, that would allow us to counter that a little bit easier, as well as some other mechanics that were missing in MW19. But there also wasn't an intel drop this week, unfortunately, from Infinity War. We were expecting one to come out on Thursday at about 1.41 p.m. EST like we got last week. Maybe we'll get one next week, but I know right now the... Uh, Director of Communications over at Infinity War, Stephanie, did say that they are working hard on providing more of those. So I'm excited for whatever else they're going to be marketing before the official COD Next event in less than two weeks from now. Now, do let me know in the comments, though, what do you think is being referred to as backstab by this TV spot, right? What is this hinting at? And will there be a type of backstab in Modern Warfare 2 like we got in the original MW 2009, dealing with Shadow Company and Shepard? I'm very curious how they're going to kind of put a spin on that plot to assist time around for the rebooted MW2. But last and definitely not least. The same individual that posted early and spicy gameplay of Modern Warfare 2's campaign did go ahead and reconfirm that a firing range is indeed going to be included in Modern Warfare 2. So this is great. It was a feature that I love dearly in Advanced Warfare in World War 2 2017. So I do hope that whatever innovation gets brought forward in COD 2.0 is appreciated by the community a ton so that it's something that also comes back in the next trailer game, even Call of Duty's after that. I'm still wondering though, what do you guys think about the COD hub or the Call of Duty HQ like application which is rumored to come out at some point this fall it might just be a launcher where you can go ahead and launch the currently active Call of Duties it would be MW19 Cold War Vanguard and then of course Warzone 1 and 2 then MW2 I wonder when that's coming out or if it'll go beyond just being a launcher for COD and will also feature a social space similar to Headquarters in World War II 2017, a feature that I'm surprised hasn't come back since, but it's something that I think we're perfectly fitting for this new era of Call of Duty with all the releases this fall. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the possibility of finally seeing MW3 Campaign Remastered? How are you feeling about the huge update regarding PlayStation exclusivity and how the Sony and Microsoft deal will go on for years on end? And by Sony and Microsoft, I mean Sony and Activision, but you get what I mean. Also, what are your thoughts on the new footage that we got in the new TV spot and the other information we discussed? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.